Welcome to the Global Business Women's Pod, brought to you by the Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce. I am Susan Dyson and proud to be the CEO, President, and Founder of the Chamber. Please join us for this empowering podcast every Thursday at 6 p.m. Hi, I'm Leanne Armpriester. Hi, and I'm Carrie Lalu. And Carrie and I both proudly serve on the steering committee for the Houston CCS Alliance. Susan Dyson, CEO of Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce, has invited Carrie and I here today to share our views on the roles of women in STEAM. That stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math careers. Focused primarily on the energy industry where Carrie and I work. And we're also going to talk about the importance of advancing large-scale carbon capture and storage within the Greater Houston area in order to create a more sustainable energy future that supports job creation, economic growth, and long-term environmental prosperity. But first, I want to share more about my friend Leanne. Leanne is General Manager of Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage, that's CCUS, for Chevron New Energies. She is responsible for the development of Chevron's CCUS portfolio in the U.S. Gulf Coast and in the U.S. Midwest in order to support the decarbonization of Chevron's existing assets as well as to provide solutions for customers that desire CCUS as part of their decarbonization strategy. Leanne joined Chevron in 2007. She's been there her whole career. Yep. And after receiving her Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering from the University of Texas in Austin. Hook em. Hook em. <laughs> Since joining Chevron, Leanne has held a variety of technical and leadership positions focused on asset development, reservoir management, portfolio management, and acquisitions and investitures. That's a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Long list. Yeah, outside of work, Leanne enjoys spending time with her husband and two young children, and traveling, which we all love to do, yes. and experiencing the amazing Houston restaurant scene. Great. And now I can reciprocate by getting to introduce my friend and colleague, Carrie Lalu. And I'm excited to be able to share that Carrie has recently been promoted to Vice President of Global Sales for Lindy, where she is going to have the responsibility for Lindy's strategic global account management. So prior to this role, Carrie was the Director of Business Development, where she was um, tasked with developing large capital projects in the Americas um, with specific responsibilities for carbon capture and storage strategy and solutions for Lindy's existing assets as well as their, their new U.S. Gulf Coast assets, um, which is how Carrie and I have come to know each other. So Carrie has a total of 26 years of experience across the energy industry including at companies including Synthesis Energy Systems, G GE, and S&B Engineers and Constructors. She's a native Houstonian like me, graduated from Kingwood High School, and has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from the University of Notre Dame. And she's also a licensed professional engineer in the state of Texas, which is quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the Houston CCS Alliance, it's a coordinated effort among some of the world's most innovative energy, petrochemical and power generation companies that are working really hard to advance the development of CCS in the greater Houston industrial area. So collectively, these companies' efforts are working to capture and store approximately 50 million metric tons of carbon dioxide per year by 2030, and then 100 million metric tons per year by 2040. To learn more, please visit their website at www.houstonccs.com. The members of this alliance include Air Liquide, BASF, Calpine, Channelview Cogeneration, Co Chevron, Dow Chemical, ExxonMobil, Enios, Lindy, Lionel Bissell, Marathon Petroleum, Phillips 66, as well as Shell. So Carrie, I gave a brief intro on you, but how about you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what life for you looks like outside of work, along with some, some details about your career journey. Sure. Well, uh, outside of work, I'm a wife and a mom of two teenagers. Um, I live up in the north side of the Houston area. Uh, I've been here my entire life with the exception of going to college, so I really am a very embedded Houstonian. <laughs> um, so I'm really busy with two kids, you know, trying my daughter's going to be a senior in high school, and so we're getting her ready to go off to college and trying to figure out what that looks like and where she's going to go yeah. and study. and. Uh, my son is going to be a sophomore in high school, and he's working on his Eagle Scout projects. Oh, that's so awesome. They keep us running you yes, know, they all do. the time. Um, and then really outside of that, I spend time with the rest of my family and friends. I have a lot of family still in the Houston area. And then I like to volunteer in my community. My favorite charity is uh, an organization called the Giving Gown Foundation, where um, 
Uh, about 1,500 local Houston teenage girls are served every year to get free uh, prom dresses. That's awesome. And I get to play fairy godmother, and it's my the best job I have. <laughs> and I don't get paid a single dime for it. So. I love it. That's great. <laughs> so in my career journey, you know, I started off as an engineer. I really was a process engineer working on designing uh, ammonia plants and uh, gasification plants. So that's what I spent most of my career doing. Uh, and then um, somewhere in the middle of that, tried to move over into the commercial side of the business. And um, so about 15 years ago, I uh, started working on you know, how to get out of that super heavy technical role, but applying all that I learned in school and in my first half of my career. So uh, I'm excited to now really be able to apply that in my new sales role and uh, my relationship building skills yep. and, and uh, get back to traveling the world. So now it's going to be now, fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, global footprint. Busy times. Um, so now it's your turn, Leanne. Now it's my yeah, turn. Yeah, I'd love to hear more um, about what you do. Yeah. So I'll start I'll start on the personal and family front like you did. So um, I've got two kids as well. So I've got a nine-year-old um, daughter who's going to be going into fourth grade and a six-year-old little boy who's going to be going into first. Um, just like you're busy with teenagers, I'm super busy in this phase of their life. And so I would say my life outside of work is whatever their life outside of work yeah, is. Right. Um, <laughs> so we truly just try and prioritize the family time, right, when we're outside of the office and helping them kind of learn and find their ways and what they're loving to do. Um, I grew up born and raised in Houston out in the Cypress area. I left only for, for college um, at UT, like you mentioned earlier. Always said I want to come back to Houston, but that's where the jobs were. Um, so I wound up back here, and I'm maybe an oddity in the fact that I've worked my entire career with Chevron here and here in Houston, um, which I think just underpins the the level of opportunity though that that's here. So when I started with Chevron, um, like you, I hired in in a technical role. I was working as a pr production engineer. Um, out in kind of the East Texas fields, and I'd travel back and forth um, on the weekends. And it just went from there, working assets, um, primarily in the United States, as well as in Angola and um, in Africa, and always focused really on the technical side until kind of the halfway point where we started to pivot and bring in more of that business, commercial strategy and planning um, aspect, which I, I grew to love. And then in the past year, I've transitioned over into the Chevron New Energy side yeah. of the business. So um, the it <laughs> is, it is. Um, and it's a new day every day, lots of learning. As you know, yes. um, the industry, we're kind of building the playbook as we go. And so it's giving me the opportunity to do what I love doing as an engineer, which was solving problems, yep. um, but integrated with that, that business and commercial aspect as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So Carrie. Let's get into why you think it's important for women to have a strong leadership presence in the STEAM careers. Yeah, so, you know, probably like you, um, why did I become an engineer is because I knew that I was strong in math and science and I didn't really know even what that meant for me, right? But yeah. um, engineering seemed like a, uh, the path that was available at college, this was a long time ago. <laughs> the paths have expanded. Yes. There's many, many more opportunities for, for folks to study in college, a variety of uh, different STEAM paths. But at the time, that's what I thought was the natural course. And and really, I don't. when I look back at it, I don't think that I loved science and loved math, but I loved the logic. I loved solving problems, exactly what yep. you just said. And that really kind of gave me the opportunity to use those kind of skills and I think that women are actually really good at a lot sol solving logic problems you know we are very generally right brain and left brain balance maybe more so than some of our male colleagues yes um, and so really we should be in these yeah. roles right um, and and not only that we're generally very good at multitasking mm -hmm. uh, balancing a lot of different things as we're yes. doing on a regular basis and and also um, you know we're generally good communicators and um, I would say uh, negotiators. Right? Yes, I love we that have, point. We have to balance everybody's yes. interests, you know, at home, and so bringing that to the work workforce and being able to do that uh, in a in a highly technical role. Yes, I mean that's really how you get things done, right? Solving problems is that you have to get everybody on board, moving in the right direction, and in agreement with what your solution is. So I love it. Women are great at that. We are. And, and honestly, it works both ways, right? So the things we've, we've learned in our home life that we bring and make us successful right. in the work life, the inverse can be true too. That's right. So yeah. What about you? What, do you? what do you think? Yeah, so I agree with everything you say, and it's funny how I wound up in this space. I think, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Yeah. Um, I had an affinity for math and sciences. Um, and so I was headed off to, to college, and you had to make a selection because I wasn't going to waste a year without electing some right. kind of career path or degree path. And uh, 
yeah, I, you know, my dad said to me, well, then get your engineering degree and you can go and do whatever job you want after that. Easy button. <laughs> and it's been true. I mean, it, it definitely opened the door to what now, I mean, I, I am not an engineer in any form or fashion at this point, but it did get my career started in a space where I had some natural ability and just passion, right, for back to the, the solving problems. I think the only other thing I'd add to kind of all the great things you said about why women and showing up as strong leaders in this space is so important is also around just the diversity of thought. So I think the most successful teams who can solve problems um, and accelerate solutions are the ones who have diversity of perspectives, diversities of thought. Um, they can challenge one another constructively and have candor and, and honest conversations um, and really accelerate that value for the company. And I think women and, and bringing that into, into the leadership space has really been a game changer in the, in the industries. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, that's why you see all the large companies have goals set yep. about how to diversify their top leadership. So there's yeah. no doubt about that. That's, that's well proven. Good point. So here in Houston... Um, we pride ourselves on being the energy capital of the world, and I know you're heavily involved in shaping that with Lindy. So can you talk a little bit about what your company's lower carbon business initiatives are and what you, you guys are doing in this space? Yeah, I'd love to. So Lindy um, is one of the world's largest industrial gas companies, which means that we make hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, maybe things that we don't think about every day, yep. right? but they're very important to everything we do. Um, here in the uh, Texas Gulf Coast, Hydrogen is used to make the most important things that we use every day, which are gasoline to put yes. in our car. Um, so it's used in the refining industry and, and also in the chemical industry. And and it is one of uh, the manufacture of hydrogen is one of the things that is impacting our, our carbon footprint here in Houston. And so um, at Lindy, we're hyper focused on reducing the carbon footprint of our hydrogen production. And we produce um, about a billion and a half cubic feet of hydrogen here. In, okay. Uh, so very large quantities yeah. uh, that puts about 9 million tons of CO2 in the air every yep. year. So very large amounts. So we're looking at putting carbon capture on all of those facilities to remove the CO2 from those production units and work with folks like yourselves yes. and others to put that CO2 into the ground and keep it there permanently and safely long after we're all gone, it'll still be That's there. right. So, um, but what that does is really help to impact, you know, the air quality around here. And of course, that's really what that means is the atmosphere of the, the earth, right? So that's right. we can help to avoid additional global warming, so. Great. Well, I'll share a little bit about Chevron yeah. in this space. You kind of alluded to it, and it's nice that you went first because you guys are really focused on the capture part right. of the CCS, right. um, which we will do as well. But we also have kind of, we're trying to bring our capabilities, our experience, our assets to bear in, in the transportation and storage space as well. And as you alluded to, we're looking at doing that for both our own Chevron assets, um, as well as for third parties. We're trying to grow a business to support all the industries out there who really are going to be looking to CCS as a lever to help lower their carbon their carbon footprint as well. And that goes across a ton of industries. I mean, you mentioned yours, obviously traditional oil and gas side of the business with refineries as well, um, but cement, steel, tons of products that all of us use every part of our, part of our everyday lives, right? Um, which we still need those products, we just need to find a way to produce them with a lower carbon footprint. And that's what Chevron's focused on. So we've made a commitment um, to spending $10 billion in this space by 2028 and to, in order to grow these portfolios. And this is something we're looking at doing both here in the Houston area, the Gulf Coast, US, and then globally. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carrie, can you give us a story about one of the most influential or inspirational leaders that have you've come across in your career? Uh, well, I've had a long career, 26 years, and so I've had a lot of people who've influenced me over those times. And I've been at many different companies, so a lot of, a lot of folks. But I would say that one of the most uh, inspirational uh, moments I had was when I was working to interview with Lindy, to get a job with Lindy. That was six years ago. And I was a little nervous, you yeah. know, I thought, well, maybe I'm not the right person for this job. Maybe I'm getting a little too far out over my skis. And um, I called a friend of mine who was vice president of HR for a big oil and gas company. Her name's Rebecca. And she said, uh, she said, Carrie, uh, women consistently undervalue themselves and underestimate themselves. She said, go in there and tell them exactly what you can do, exactly what you have done and exactly what you're worth. And I guarantee they will give you everything you ask for. And I was terrified to do that. Of course you were. <laughs> uh, you know, gulp. Uh, but I did. I thought, what did I have to lose? So proud of right? you. Right? And, and they did. 
That's awesome. They did. And uh, I've been treated really well. And obviously now, you and know, you've by, done really by well. our recent advancement. So, you know, I have no complaints, but I've really carried that advice with me, which is don't ever be afraid to tell people what you're uh, able to do because we, as women, we just don't do that. We don't do it as good as men, right? That's so. right. So I have this, a very similar experience. Um, I had participated in a leadership development program within Chevron that was focused primarily on women. And um, one of the stats that I learned in there is that when you see a job, a job description, and let's say it has four selection criteria, a male will typically look at that and think, well, I, I check one to two of the four boxes I should go for, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and females will tend to say, well, I don't check all four. I only check three. I can't, I'll never compete on that yeah, slate. That's right. And so I had come back and shared all these learnings about how women are more prone to not putting ourselves forward and leaning into things with my, my supervisor, who was a female at the time. And fast forward, you know, four months or so, and, and I was going to apply for another another job within the company. And I was saying all of the typical things, like I'm not gonna compete, blah, blah, blah. And she said, Leanne, remember the leadership program that you went through and all the things they told you not to do? You're doing all of them right now. And she's like, just go for it. Just go for it, that's right. And, um, and that led to two jobs ago, which then springboarded me into the job I'm in now. And I think about that just go for it piece all the time. Because um, just to your point, we really, we can have a tendency of, of self-doubt. Um, but we are just as competitive and women have a lot to bring to the table and we are great at rising to challenge, right? And so I think when, when I have the opportunity to mentor upcoming females, um, whether it's in you know, the business side or, or the STEAM side of things, it's just continuing to, to push them to push themselves, to not be afraid or, or to self-doubt and to really lean into the opportunities that are before them because they are, they are capable yeah. and we need them in those positions. Yeah, that's right. And we have to consistently remind ourselves, all of us, yes. that, about that. It's accountability. It's easy to tell somebody else that and then not do it yourself. That's right. So. <laughs> Joint accountability, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I've had a great time with Me you. Me too. Today. It's always great to catch up with yeah. you. And thank you for to the Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce for having us today. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again next Thursday at 6 p.m. For more information about the Chamber and our podcast, please visit us at ghwcc.org.